we're going to talk about leadership and a willingness to communicate. I am Alex Lyon, and we are working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership, a communication perspective. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So let's get into it. So there's a really important concept called willingness to communicate that's associated with leadership. So high levels of leadership call for higher levels of a willingness to communicate, sometimes abbreviated as WTC. And you can tell if you have a willingness to communicate by certain characteristics. So people with a high willingness to communicate are more likely to do the following things like talk one-on-one -on -one to a gas station attendant, cashier, secretary, or stranger while standing in line. Talk to a small group of acquaintances, friends, or colleagues. Talk or present in a group of friends, colleagues, or strangers. So if you are willing and quick to do those kinds of communication activities, then you probably have a high level of willingness to communicate. And there are quizzes and assessments you can take on this as one in, in their book. If you are less willing to do these things, if you don't find yourself doing these kinds of activities, then you probably have a low willingness to communicate. Oh, but there is some good news to, to this, and if you want to work on it, you can, and we'll get to that in a minute. But individuals with a high willingness to communicate have a lot of benefits. For example, here are just some of them. These people are viewed as more credible. They're more likely to be hired and then promoted. They're seen as generally more attractive. So if you take someone of this exact same level of attractiveness, let's say you teach them how to communicate more with other people, other people will instantly see them as more attractive. I think that's very interesting. They are seen as leaders. When you're communicating, people see you as leaders. And in fact, many people who communicate well are leaders. You're seen as more humorous. You generally will have more friends and you'll be less stressed. Communication is associated with more openness to change, and you would be more open to tasks that require thought. So there's a lot of benefits for you if you can increase your level of willingness to communicate. Now, there is some hope if you are not like this, but there also are reasons why people are not like this in the first place. It's not just because they don't feel like it. There are numerous reasons people are less willing. For example, they just might be naturally shy or introverted. That's a personality trait. Introversion is a part of who many people are. And it doesn't mean you can't communicate, you just might have a low willingness to. You also, second, might put a low value on talk. You just might be one of those people that's saying, you know, I just don't care to, to talk and engage with people. And so naturally you're not going to. You might have anxiety, fear, possibly some low self-esteem going on that prevents you from engaging with other people more readily. You might have low confidence in your social skills. So you might even want to talk to people, for example, but you think, oh, I just don't know what to say. And you don't have that confidence. Now, the good news is you can get better at this. Skill development and practice can build your confidence. So communication classes will help boost your confidence. A class like public speaking, for example. There are a lot of great things that happen when you take a public speaking class and really get into it. You, first of all, will get better at public speaking, of course. Anything you practice at like that, you'll get better. But also, that class alone will help to bring people out of their shells and get them to be more expressive. I've seen a lot of students and professionals transformed over the years by just working a little on their public speaking. And then those communication skills begin to translate into other areas of their life in one-on-one -on -one situations or even in groups. So there's a lot of association between leadership and a willingness to communicate. And if you want to become a leader, it's going to call for higher levels of communication. So question of the day, how, do you, how willing are you to communicate? Maybe you have taken this self-assessment in Johnson and Hackman's book, or maybe just going by this video, you can gauge your willingness. Where are you on a scale of one to 10? 10 would be, oh yeah, I'll talk to anybody, anytime, any place. And down toward zero or one is, oh boy, I do not like to engage. I look forward to reading your comments in that section below the video. Until next time, take care.